Okay, so I was just on this show the other night with this atheist named Objectively Dan and a uh, call-in show. And he was pretty cool, it went really well, you know, usually goes pretty well these days with, with the atheists. Um, but he asked me a question. I was telling him about how I became a Christian, what, how I became a Christian when I was 30, and how I had these experiences prior to me becoming a Christian that in hindsight I would have described as spiritual. Now, there are two versions of these, and we didn't really have time to get into it, so for edification's sake, I'm just going to clarify for my own sense of well-being and for whoever's listening, what the difference between those two versions were. Now, the first thing that I would describe, I had experiences prior to me becoming a Christian that in hindsight I would describe as legitimately spiritual. And if, in fact, I am a Christian for real, because I am having experiences with the living God and I am not deluding myself, then those experiences would have been the beginning stages of God actually reaching out to me and planting seeds within my soul, my heart and mind and soul. Uh, the first one of those I remember very well. I was in Italy. There were numerous, but these are the two, two of the most important ones. Um, I was in Italy. I had a girlfriend at the time um, from Vienna. She was, uh, she was a little bit older than me. She was like 25 years old, and she designed women's underwear. Uh, yeah, it was a good summer. <laughs> I had a really good time. Um, she was a really nice girl. It was, it was, she was a little bit out of my league, you know. She was, she was kind of established in the world and a professional, and I was kind of like a, just a sort of traveling college schlub. But I was studying Italian at the time in Florence. And her and I took a drive, we went away for a weekend, and we went to a small town known as San Gimignano. It's a town um, in Italy, it's about an hour outside of Florence. And and we were in this town in Italy, and there was this procession that walked by. We were walking around the day, and there was a Catholic procession, uh, like a traditional religious experience or traditional religious event where this group of people being led by a priest with the swinging incense and he had choir boys behind him and then there was a whole bunch of people, congregants, following him and they were walking down the street and the incense was burning and they were doing these sl slow melodic chants and I was actually awestruck. I'd never seen anything like that in my life. I'd never in my life had I had experienced any sort of contact with anything traditionally religious in that sense that made any impression on me whatsoever. And this made a big impression on both of us, actually. We stood there kind of in awe a little bit of what we were seeing. And I don't really know how to describe the experience except a combination of deep peace and awe. And then a little later on in my life, very similar experience. I was with my wife, and we were in England. My wife is half English, as some of you know, and her aunt and uncle live out in the West Country of Dorset. And the first year we were dating, we went to visit them around Christmas time. And we were driving in the countryside. It's beautiful out there, West Country of England. And we pulled over to this little abandoned church from like the 16th century. And I had the same feeling. We were walking around taking pictures, and we were both moving really slow. And I felt that same sort of feeling of like combination of a very peaceful feeling and a sense of awe, reverence. And I'd never felt that before. Now, if in fact there is a God and I'm having legitimate experiences with the living God, both of those two things were, would be God himself having reached out to me. Um, that's clear to me. Now, there were other experiences that I had. <laughs> that at the time I would have described as spiritual. Um, yeah, mostly drug-related, to be perfectly honest, almost all drug-related, and in hindsight I do not consider them spiritual. Um, I don't know exactly what to make of them. Um, for example, one time I was on psychedelics. I won't go into too much of the story, but I was, I was in high school, yeah, doing psychedelics in high school, not a good, not a good thing, not a good idea. Um, so if it was spiritual, it was bad spiritual. And I remember feeling this weird sense of like, I, I sort of understood why hippies and, you know, the, pe the dropouts from the, the 60s, I started feeling very, very like 
one of them, like a Timothy Leary type. And I remember like reaching down in the, in the field in my hometown and feeling like I could, uh, thinking I could feel the whole world turn and sink. And then I was seeing all these visions in the cloud. I mean, it was a typical psychedelic experience in some levels, but I would have described it at the time and for a long time afterwards as very, very spiritual. Um, in hindsight, I do not think that was actually spiritual. I don't know exactly what to make of it, but I would nef definitely not describe it as spiritual nowadays. But the two other experiences that I definitely would. Now, those two weren't isolated experiences. That was just the beginning of what I, in hindsight, would honestly describe as God, you know, moving on my heart, reaching out to me. Um, make of that what you will. I just made this video really just to clarify in my own mind what the difference was between those two types of experience. So, there you go. That's the story. Make of that what you will. Amen.